Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about attack surface. This topic is a very important topic when you're preparing for Security Plus or CC or CISSP or any other certification. The agenda of this particular video is to give you the visibility about how this topic works. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first, what is attack surface? If you see the definition, it is it will say attack surface refer to some of all the different point the surface where the unauthorized user attacker and try to enter data or extract data from the environment or do the attacks. So let's understand with the example. Let's take example, we have a system A. Okay, so this is basically my system A. Okay, now in this system, we enable two ports, port one, port two. Okay, and we have a port three. Then we have a system B. Okay, so we have a port one and port two. And then we have a system C, where we have a port one. Now, when we talking about surface, okay, so here we have a three opportunities. So attacker basically have a three opportunities by which he can able to penetrate into the system A. Okay. In the case of B, he basically have a two opportunity by which he can able to penetrate. And here he basically have one particular port through which he trying to penetrate. So here what happened? Simple logic is if you increase the functionality. Simple is if you increase the functionality. Okay. You're actually also increasing the surface to exploit. And if you decrease the functionality, you basically decrease the attack surface. That's a simple principle rule. It is same like when you go out, you're wearing a mask and all that. It's extra protection. But if you don't wearing a mask, okay, and here what happen is you don't cover up things and all that and you expose everything. So that is basically invite the opportunity to attack. So attack surface basically play a very important role in, in the information security, how you basically plan, how you plan things and all that. The second example is we have a system A, which is basically connected with the internet. So you're more exposed to the internet. So there is a chances through the internet they can do attack. On the other side, we have a system B, which is part of an internal network. Or here you can see system B. It is part of internal network. We have a firewalls and everything as a security control, not as a functionality. So it is difficult to do the attack surface or it is difficult to do the attack. So attack surface is basically very important to prioritize. See, we, we, it's not our intention, okay, we have to increase a functionality to, to, you know, so attacker can able to launch, no. We increasing a functionality because we want to give freedom to the user. We want to provide the services, okay. Businesses always start with the concept of balancing the security versus functionality. Okay, if you see the hierarchy, let's say example, uh, airport. If you see, take an example of airport, we have a two level of security checks. So here we have one security check and then we have another security check. So if you see from the first gate, they only check tickets and everything which allow you to go inside. They cannot do the deep level of inspection on the gate one because it will create a huge queue. But after collecting a boarding pass and everything, you go to detailed security check and here they have a detailed security inspection. They are okay to compromise functionality, but they cannot compromise security. So that is how the example look like. So if you see the first gate, they do high level check because of functionality reason, they want to pass the candidate. So there is a possibility anyone can do attack. But that is the reason is they have a second layer of check, which is called a detailed check. There is an impact of functionality because for them, they don't want to leave any new attack surface. So attack surface is an opportunity we try to exploit. Now, attack surface is like a total exposure of a system to potential attack. And the broader the attack surface, the more opportunity the attacker has to exploit. That's why one of the key responsibility of the security professional is to reduce the attack surface. So there's a quiz we have. Okay, so we have a system A. I have installed the Windows. Okay, and then I basically install the VMware workstation. And then on top of it, I basically create a machines. Along with that, I'm also installing some other machines. 
and this environment two is basically we have a server and directly i basically deployed the asxi and then on top of it i basically create a machine now you tell me in the comment box which attack surface is bigger so in this case attack surface bigger is one because we have a functionality here to exploit we have a functionality here to exploit through which we gain access but in this case we just need to protect this my end goal is to protect this because if i protect asxi i protect the entire infrastructure so more functionality more cost so according to that you need to prioritize is it clear now attack surface is basically varies so we have a different type of attack surface so first is called as a network attack surface which include all the network points through which attacker can potentially enter again it is depending upon uh, what kind of a ports are open so suppose this is basically my server and this is basically a firewall if you allow more ports to be traveled through this particular network so attacker will use those ports through which they can try to enter so example like open ports what kind of a rules we create in a firewall what kind of a network protocols you have allowed let's say example this is the website and we basically allow port number 80 okay we allow 443 now attacker has an option either he can exploit through the port number 80 or 443 okay if other unnecessary ports are open they can also exploit that so so that's why we say keep things simple whatever the ports you need to allow you can only allow rest you can block so by this way you can able to focus on the quality instead of quantity sometime firewall was configured with only basic rule like source is any destination is basically a web server source port is any and destination port is 80 hypothetical scenario so there's a traffic coming from source any and destination is going on port number 80 that is possible now but the question is that what kind of a content he carry on that port we don't we don't we are not doing the inspection so when we allow more functionality to pass the traffic because if you go if you basically implement too much inspection on the firewall it will impact the performance so we we will let them to pass more and more data so in that data what happen is they don't inspect the content and that is an opportunity attacker can use to bypass the network and that is how we say keep things simple now we have attack surface on the software level okay so we have a web server the same example okay it running with the three vulnerabilities so attacker has a three opportunity to exploit so this is called as a software attack surface this consists of software running on the system such as operating system application services so a web server must be up to date and any vulnerability in the server could be exploited or the code is basically uh, running on the web application could also have a bug so attacker can able to exploit the bug and gain access so no matter you have protect everything on the server but the application which is running on the server it has a bug so attacker exploit the bug and gain access or entire thing are secure end to end everything has been tested but you downloaded some drivers and libraries and that basically ex bring the exploit that basically bring the vulnerability so so the application might use third party library or framework can have a vulnerability so that is called as a software attack surface okay and third is basically called as a human attack surface human attack surface mean attacker might target the end user now let's take example there is an employee who have not attended the security awareness training so he is not aware about okay what links to be click or what links to be ignore so attacker basically uses opportunity and he sends a phishing email to those users so that is called as a human attack surface okay or you can have a developers they have not been trained on how the secure coding done so because of the stupidity they write some code which can bring attacker opportunity or administrator could trick into misconfiguring the system or inadvertently installing a malware so these are the opportunities we have that attackers basically use to target okay social engineering and all that so question is how to reduce the attack surface so keep the software os up to date and install which is relevant because more you install more opportunity you basically bring the second thing is that from a network security point of view disable all the ports which is not required have a proper network segmentation so let's say example if you're planning for a network segmentation is suppose this is your network we have you can have three servers here if you think these servers are internet exposed if you think these servers are internet exposed so in, you can only install the internet exposed servers like it can be my web server okay you can have a dns server because these are want you want on an internet 
and those are internal to the organization keep it in the other network which is protected by the firewall example like database active directory and all that so we can have a basic rule in this firewall all traffic by firewall can access this and that's the work done if someone want to hack into the internal network he has to pass through layer of security checks so that's all so whatever the critical server public facing you can keep it in the dmz and whatever the sensitive we have we can keep it in the internal network so you can have a network segmentation by which you can reduce the attack surface then we have a secure coding practice like regular code review implement proper authentications and all that and on the human level we can have a proper trainings and all that make them more aware about the attacks threats and everything and we can also enforce a strong password policies so that's something you can do now the question is basically by doing a monitoring also you can able to track this particular functions you can see the deviation and according to that you can able to patch so these are basically the the functions we have controls we have by which you can reduce the attack surface now let's understand whether you understood this topic or not with the question which of the following best describe the strategy to reduce the network attack surface of corporate network option a implement robust password policy and educate user about phishing attack it is more directive control even you basically implement the policy what is an assurance people will follow that option b closing the unnecessary port using a firewall segmenting a network into the smaller isolated subnet that is something more relevant to the network attack surface c is called as a regular updating antivirus software on all the endpoint and conduct routing routine vulnerability scan but that is more from an endpoint security and option d is installing the ideas to monitor network traffic for suspicious activity d makes sense but d is part of a b that is the reason answer is basically b for beta let's move to the next question how can the concept of attack surveys be effectively used to enhance the organization cyber security strategy option a identifying and prioritizing a patching of all known vulnerabilities across the organization regardless of the impact on attack surface actually it is impossible to do that because uh, if you see practicality we have to do that but it is not possible we can able to patch every vulnerability option b by mapping out all the potential entry point and focusing on reducing the most critical vectors attack vectors through the target security measure which makes sense option c is implement a comprehensive security awareness training and include the training on the importance of password complexity safe browsing habit that's more from a user point of view and d say by deploying a single security solutions such as next generation firewall to monitor the and protect against the th threats so if you're going to implement a single solution does not make sense actually it can be single point of failure so most important thing mapping out all the potential entry points and focus on the most critical stuff first so by this you can able to prioritize okay so this is all from my side do let me know how do you find this new series which give you the better visibility about the topics and uh, your feedbacks are most important and i can see that you still not subscribe to the channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic and your feedbacks your comments are basically very important okay good day take care bye